Welcome, 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 day 25, by the grace of God. Hakuna mungu mwingine illa, hakuna mungu mwingine illa, hakuna mungu mwingine illa, Jehovah. There is no other God apart from the Lord. We give him the praise, we give him the honor, we give him the adoration for he is a great God. I welcome you. I am Malcolm David Silla. It's day 25 by the grace of God. It's August 25th. The Lord has been faithful with us in this new season, season 2 of the book of Psalms, going through, praying every day and uh, handling different things that the Lord has allowed us by his grace and by his favor. I do welcome you, welcome you, welcome you, welcome you into this broadcast. I bless the Lord for you and also for those of you that have been going together with us the last 25 days or so. The Lord has been doing amazing things among us and even among the, you know, different situations, conditions and circumstances in our families. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord for this. So I invite you and I also ask you to invite another one and another one. It's never too late to read the word of God. You cannot say you are, you are late to start. No, you can just begin to right away in the name of Jesus Christ. So share this video and uh, share, 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 share. Then we can be able to commence in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 time to glorify his name on this Tuesday. The Lord has been faithful. The Lord has been wonderful. Um, just being able to, you know, glorify his name and magnify his name and worship him on this beautiful, beautiful Tuesday that the Lord has given unto us. And we worship him. We worship him. We worship him. We worship him. We worship him, Jesus. We worship him, we worship him, we worship you, King of Kings. Hallelujah. Without any instruments, without any song, we lift up your voice. We lift up our voices to you and say, The Lord, you reign. And Lord, I just want to ask that you may cleanse my heart, cleanse my mind, cleanse me of anything that, Lord, did not glorify you, Lord, in my meditation, in anything I may have said, Lord, in anything I may have imagined. Father, I pray that your presence may just constantly be upon us, even as we start this broadcast, my God. So I pray over the bread, I pray over the cup. I pray that, Father, even as I partake of the bread and as I partake of your cup, I will proclaim of your death until you come in the mighty name of Jesus. So, Lord, I thank you and I bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the book of, um, in the book of um, Ephes uh, Col uh, Corinthians, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter number 11, verse 23, the word of the Lord says, I received from the Lord what I also 
gave unto you the night that the Lord Jesus Christ was betrayed. He took bread, and after he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, and after he had given thanks, he took it and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. I should do this. Every time you drink it in remembrance of me, for whenever you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Hallelujah. So I want us to just begin by doing that faith action of the Lord's communion, even as we get on with this wonderful broadcast of Psalm 25, Proverbs 25, and also we shall be talking to God about the cost, about the consent of ignorance. I'll be telling you what that is. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let us partake of the bread together. Come on, that's 
somebody, share this video. Let's get on together. Sister, Pastor Celeste out there in Seoul, Korea. Welcome, welcome. You know, when it's this nice, we have to start it again, all the top, as we bless the Lord and cut into day 25. What a joy. It's in, we are approaching the sixth watch here in Nairobi by the grace of God. And also it's in the midnight watch in Missouri. And also it's an early watch in France. I believe that the Lord is moving supernaturally, connecting us in globally, globally, globally for His grace and His favor. Oh, he who makes peace in his high places. He will make peace upon us, all of Israel. Welcome, Jamisha Wambo. We welcome you. Elsie Agola, Anna Wamwangi, we welcome you. And I'm looking forward to connecting with somebody in Israel very soon. You're going to be having one of us there. He will bring peace upon us. 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 Shalom. He will bring peace upon us. Shalom. They are called Israel. On all of Israel, he will bring peace upon us. Jacqueline Repa, Jacqueline Ache, Sheila Kimoni, Linda Sianzliga, Odima Steven, Clifton, Bruto, Mze Moja. Welcome all of you wonderful people. Oh, say shalom. He who makes peace in the high places. Oh, say shalom. Here that we see my day. Welcome all of you. Oh, say shalom.
There is none like you, our Father. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be adored. You are worthy to be glorified. Everyone say Amen. Be imru ame. Be imru ame. Welcome, beloved of the Lord. Welcome, sons and daughters of the Most High King of Kings. Let's all learn some Hebrew. We say it. Ve'imru amen. Come on, say it. Yes, say it. Ve'imru amen. I'm sure you can do it. Ve'imru amen. Welcome, Agola Elsie. We celebrate you. Welcome. Welcome. Wave, wave for Jesus. Wave for Jesus. Bless his name, honor him. Be imru amen. Yeah, we're always saying be imru. Be imru amen. This is the Hebrew. It says be imru amen. It means let everyone say amen. Let everyone say amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Greetings, 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 greetings to you all. Emily Grace out there, we celebrate you. We honor the Lord for you. He did not, he did not spare his one and only son. He did not spare. The Lord Jesus did not spare, was not spared. He was not spared. Jesus was not spared. And that's why we sing it. For the Lord did not spare his one son, one and only begotten son. Hallelujah. This one says, he did not spare his one and one son, but delivered him over to us. Uh, we got to start this all over again from the top. I'm going to share it with you. Don't worry, you're going to learn it. We are on to Psalm 25, and today it's before a live audience from all over the world. We have South Korea, we have, uh, we have, um, we have, uh, can you just tell us where you are? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just let us know on the timeline. Where are you watching from? Let us bless the Lord. I'm from Nairobi, Kenya, and we worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah! Wait for the Lord, wait for the Lord Jesus! Long, Lord, I shake that sun ever. Say, oh, to baby, yeah, the land. Hallelujah! 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 Neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come will be able to separate us from the love of God. Neither dead, neither life, no angels, no principalities can either. Hey! 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 We will be able to separate us from the love of God. This is the song in the Hebrew here. Ooh. Ooh. Hallelujah. We thank God for subtitles. We can understand this Hebrew song. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come will be able to separate us from the love of God. Hallelujah. None. None. Ya fridu mehat Elohim. Ya fridu dunu 
may heart Elohim can separate us from the love of God. Welcome people from all over the world as the Lord is connecting us. France is watching, South Korea is watching, Jeddah in Saudi Arabia. We bless you, Jesus. We bless your name. Psalm 25, get ready. Get ready. Hallelujah. Hey. Amen, amen, Sister Gola. The love of God is fulfilled in my life and my family. Hallelujah. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities will be able to separate us from the Lord, says the word of God. And we bless the Lord for his goodness and his mercy. We honor him for this time that he has brought us together, to gather together to read out the word of the Lord and enter even into a time zone that we are together capturing the dates. Even as I celebrate and give testimony and wonderful blessings of what God did yesterday in the Mission Monday. I mean, I saw the speed of God in the things that I was doing. Thank you so much for your prayers. Thank you so much for your giving. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so much that the Lord enabled us together to go on that mission. Because in the times we are in now, we cannot go as a group. We cannot go as, uh, you know, the way we used to do it before, like a crusades and meetings and conferences out there openly. It was not what we are able to do. But now, still the work of souls is continuing. Souls must be added. People must come to the Lord. People must be delivered from sickness and disease. And the kingdom of darkness must be plundered. In the name of Jesus, we must plunder the kingdom of darkness. We must snatch souls from the fire in the mighty name of Jesus. This is the blessing that the Lord has given unto us. Today we are starting it differently. We are starting it with the book of Ephesians. We want to pray Ephesians chapter 1 verse number 15 to 23. And then we are going to pray from Ephesians chapter number 3 from verse 14 all the way to 21. It's important that your spiritual eyes are open. It's important that your eyes are enlightened. It's important that you may understand what God is doing in the nations and even in your life, in your family, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Sister Celeste says here, hallelujah. What can we say? What can you say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? Says, what can separate us from the love of Christ? Hallelujah. It says, Nothing can separate us, hallelujah. Neither hardship, no trouble, no hardship, no persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword that can be able to separate us. So I want to go into that book and I'm going to pray today from the Amplified Version because the Amplified Version is a very good version. It enables us to, to understand and amplify the English words because it's translated from the Hebrew first, then it comes into English, then into English, English. Because you know, English is able to expound and for us to understand. But most importantly, like I've told you before, it's much important for you to read in your first language. Even if you are not, your accent is not there, just purpose. If at all you can speak in your first language, then you can read in your first language. There are some, some of the challenges that you are facing today. Some of the covenants that were made, they were made in your first language. The things, the things that were made, the things that were said, were said in your first language. And today I come to mention to you some things because we want to destroy, um, we want to destroy the cost of ignorance. We want to destroy the cost of ignorance totally, the, the, the consent of ignorance. Ignorance is something that even is written in the book of, of Hosea, that my people perish for lack of knowledge. The people are perishing because they don't have knowledge. And I thank God because as we read out the scriptures, as we are able to understand what the scriptures say, then we are able to come out and understand it the more. The book of Ephesians chapter 1, I'll read it in the Amplified from verse 15 to 23. And this is what it says. For this reason, 
because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints, in brackets, the people of God, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Hallelujah. Verse number 17, For I always pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, Hallelujah. Verse 16, I don't cease to give thanks to you, making mention of you in my prayers, for I always pray, verse 17, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, of insight into mysteries and secrets, in the deep and intimate knowledge of him. Verse 18. This is the amplified version I'm reading. Verse 18. By having the eyes of your heart flooded with light. So that you can know and understand the hope to which he has called you. And how rich is his glorious inheritance in the saints. He set apart ones. And, and so that you, may know, you can know and understand. Hallelujah. Welcome, Sister Marianne Dula. Welcome, welcome. Verse 19 says, And so you can know and understand. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19 in the Amplified Version. That's what I am reading. It says, So that you can know and understand that what is the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power and for us who believe as demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength. Hallelujah. Verse 20 which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is named, above every title that can be conferred, not only in this age and in this world, but also in the age and the world which are to come. Verse 22, and he has put all things under his feet and has appointed him the universal and supreme head of the church, a headship exercised throughout the church in Psalm 8 verse 6, there is a scripture there. Verse 23, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all things in all, who fills all in all. For in that body lives the full measure of him who makes everything complete and who fills everything everywhere with himself i want you to pray for the spirit of wisdom and revelation right now just open your mouth and say father i pray for the spirit of wisdom and revelation upon me as we go into reading your word release the spirit of wisdom and revelation upon me come on pray pray for yourself let the spirit of wisdom and revelation be released upon us let the spirit of wisdom and revelation yes my father that we may be able to know the hope for which you have called us my god my father i pray for the spirit of wisdom and revelation even as we come to read out your word my father i pray for for the spirit of wisdom and revelation upon me, O God, upon my sisters, O God, upon my brothers, O God. I pray for the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Let it be released upon us, my God. Yes, as this is happening here live, we pray that Jehovah, you are adjusting it in the realm of the spirit. My God, as you have entered into the nine o'clock hour, even in this our time zone, my father, we thank you that even it is four in the morning in another place. But my father, my God, we pray according to your word, even as we pray that you will give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation that we may know you better, that our hearts may be flooded with light. Hallelujah. Flood our hearts with light, my God. Flood our hearts with light, King of glory. Flood our hearts with light, my Father. In the name of Jesus, my God, we pray for your heart, my God, our hearts to be flooded with light. My God, that we may be able to see, oh God, we may be able to see, again. we may be able to know and understand the hope for which you have called us and how rich is this glorious inheritance in the saints. He said apart ones my god we pray that we may be able to know and understand that which you have called us my god that you may help us to know and to understand in the name of jesus christ amen ephesians chapter 3 thank you jesus thank you lord ephesians chapter 3 verse 14 to 21 
I will read it again in the amplified version. It says, For this reason, seeing the greatness of the plan by which you are built together in Christ. That is the great reason. Uh -huh. And then it says, I bow my knees before the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 15. From whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that Father from, all, from whom all fatherhood takes its title and derives its name. Verse 16. May he grant you out of the rich treasury of his glory, May he grant you out of the rich treasury of his glory to be strengthened and reinforced with the mighty power in the inner man by the Holy Spirit himself indwelling your innermost being and personality. I want you to understand that is the prayer point we are making. That there is an innermost being of a human being. There is an inner dwelling of a human being of two things. Of the innermost being and of the personality. That our people understand how you are. Maybe you are a quiet person. Maybe you are a talkative person. Whatever you are. Is oh, and you are praying this prayer. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is able to allow us by his grace. The Holy Spirit is able to allow us by his grace. By this morning as we are calling on his name. As we are calling on his name. As we are calling on his name this morning. As we are lifting up our to him as we are lifting up our voices to him as we are lifting up our hearts to him, that God is able to come through in our situation God is able to come through in our condition God is able to come through in our circumstance because he is a good God because he is a good God we know that he is a faithful God we know that he is a God that answers prayer he we know that he is a God that is already upon our situation hallelujah that God has already given a praise the Lord, Pastor Andrew. Good to see you. What a joy to be able to see the faithfulness of God manifesting. That as we pray this prayer of Ephesians chapter 1, we see that hope that which we've been called by the Lord. That we may begin to see the reason why God has called you. The reason why God has called your family. The little reason why God has spoken to your situation. The reason why God has called you out is so that you can be able to show you his he can be able to show you his love, his kindness, his majesty. He can be able to show you his loving kindness. He can be able to show you his faithfulness. He can be able to show you his power. He can be able to show you his grace. He can be able to show you even things that you do not know that is able to show you by his grace and by his faithfulness in the mighty name of Jesus. As we trust this God, we know that he's a God who answers prayer. We know that he's a God who is mighty. We know that he's a God who is faithful. We know that he's a God who has already identified that Irene should not be the same way she is. He's identified that Emily should not be the same way that she is. He has identified that Malcolm David Sela has been, has been, able, to, has been able to see that which is supernatural you know, and be able to move to a new dimension, a new dimension in him. So we are moving in a new dimension by praying this prayer. So I want you to open up your heart and your ears. And even as you pray in agreement with me, because maybe you are twerking, you are twerking, you may not be able to open your mouth there and to pray. But I want you to agree with this prayer, even as we are praying. And I want you to agree like this, hallelujah, as we continue to pray. From Ephesians chapter 3, verse number 15. It says this. From whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. That father, from whom all fatherhood takes its title and derives its name. May he grant you out of the rich treasury of his glory to be strengthened and reinforced with mighty power in the inner man by the Holy Spirit himself, indwelling your innermost being and personality. Verse 17, may Christ through your faith actually dwell, settle down, abide, make his permanent home in your heart. May you be rooted deep in love. And founded securely in love. Hallelujah. Praise God. That situation that you are thinking and you are feeling like you are feeling like you need to, Yani, you need to you need to get back at that person because that person is did something that you feel 
horrible about let me tell you that you are deeply founded and deeply rooted and deeply 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 founded securely on love that love the love of Christ that is upon you that you are not going to repay evil with evil you are going to repay evil with good because God has already purposed it and so shall it be in the mighty name of Jesus Christ verse 18 that you may have the power and be strong to apprehend and grasp with all the saints that is the god's devoted people the experience of that love hallelujah glory be to god what is breadth and the length and the height and the depth of it now let me tell you this one verse 18 in the amplified let me go over each portion by portion so that you can understand it says that you may have the power and be strong because it requires strength to apprehend and grasp let me tell you you may be an engineer but you do not have the power and the strength to grasp somebody who never even went to high school may be in prayer and get that revelation and get the strength and the power to grasp you may be a doctor like my my friend dr michael rizo you may be a doctor and as a doctor you may not be able to know that the spiritual things we are talking about here they are not concerning the intellectual they are not intellectual for a professor like my sister dr mary she is a professor but she may not be able to understand the spiritual unless she pray and i thank god that she is a servant of god as well so now you can imagine if you are a phd person and you already have the power to grasp the things of god hallelujah how much more will it be because you are full of knowledge the thing that makes somebody a phd is simply because he has done a dissertation he has be able to identify a study in an area and do that study and present that study and say this is my study of abc a wonderful study like my great friend and a wonderful wonderful woman of god phd and doctor can you see your someone is already a doctor they studied and gotten a doctorate on their own a phd on top and is now humble humble giving her life to jesus humble giving her life to jesus glory to god thank you jesus hallelujah what a joy that verse 18 says that you may have the power and be strong to apprehend and grasp with all the saints this is something that is corporate is not something that is for one person this is something for all of us that we can be able to grasp together with all the saints that is god's devoted people the experience of that love we may have the power and be able to and to have the power and to be strong to apprehend and grasp now are you getting this one together here as the believers we are receiving the power to apprehend and to grasp the experience of that love the experience of that love needs power and strength for us to be able to comprehend it together as saints we comprehend the love of Jesus Christ that deeply rooted and founded and securely on love hallelujah that what is the breadth what is the length what is the height and what is the depth of it 19 that you may really come to know practically through experience for yourselves in france that when you discover that at the big big towers of pra- of paris that you could actually stay one day without any lovers there and people coming to enjoy paris that because of covid that that this situation that came upon the earth that those cities that were the most secure cities are the cities that were hit hard by this corona virus and now god is telling you in france that you have known you in italy you have known my sister sheila um uh, in in italy my pray may the lord keep you safe continue keeping you safe hallelujah i thank god that the lord has kept you safe and you will continue being safe yes yes no sickness or disease is coming upon you even in the midst of all those things that have happened in italy You see 
as you also see that this time we come to a place of we need to grasp the depth of it. And then verse 19 says that you may really come to know practically through experience for yourselves the love of Christ which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience. So as you pray this prayer, you pray, Lord, help me know practically through experience for myself. That I may see, Sister Elsie, my brother who is drunk getting delivered and serving God. That I may see my elder cousin who has never gotten married get a breakthrough first of receiving Jesus. And then the second thing, getting married. Even if they are 60 years old, they can get a person who is a believer and get married. It is possible to break those altars. It is possible for us to destroy the altars of our father's house, destroy the altars of our mother's house, to destroy them, to destroy them by not allowing ignorance to be our portion. So this is why we are praying this prayer that we may know through experience practically for ourselves the love of Christ which surpasses mere knowledge. It passes, passes mere knowledge, mere knowledge in our talk up or in a Peter, praise the Lord. Yes, we agree with you, Sister Agola. No sickness, no disease will come near your family and friends in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Even in that city where you are, the Lord is with you. The love of Christ which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience. That you may be filled through all your being. The being has three parts. We have the spirit, the soul, and the body. This is the being. This is the being. The one that calls you human being. The being is consisting of the spirit, the soul, and the body. Now you need to understand that this we are praying is that the Lord may be able to cause this throughout your being and to all the fullness of God. That is, you may have the richest measure of the divine presence and become a body wholly filled and flooded with God himself. In the name of Jesus, that you can be flooded with God, that when you show up in a place like this, you are full of God. Full Kabisa umejaa mungu. Mungu wa mekuzunguka. Me, yani hakuna kiburi, hakuna pride, hakuna nini. You are full of God. Full of God. That when you enter into a place, the people just want to bless you. And you also want to pass, pass the blessing. You don't look at the personalities of the people there and then start saying, ah, I can't talk to that one. You are not full of God. When you're full of God, irrespective of who the person is, even if they are the worst of the worst of the worst, you'll be able to love them. Listen to verse 20. Now to him, who by in consequence of and the action of his power that is at work within us is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly far above far over and above all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. We are now getting into our Psalm, Psalm 25. By the grace of God. May the Lord do those things concerning us. May the Lord answer us as we pray these prayers in the name of Jesus. Psalm. Psalm 25. Psalm 25. I encourage you, if you don't have a physical Bible, to get a physical Bible. It's important for you to have a physical hardcover Bible or soft cover, but it has to be a real Bible so that you can be able to um, mark it, underline it, and go deep with it, develop a relationship with the Word of God because it is important for you to develop that relationship with Him for He is a faithful, 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 faithful God in the mighty name of Jesus. Psalm 25 
of David. In you, Lord, my God, I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. 20, uh, verse 3. No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame, but shame will come on those who are treacherous without cause. Verse 4. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Oh, glory to God. Verse 5. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are my God and my Savior. Hallelujah. Highlight a time. Season 1, I did not highlight. Now I'm highlighting as we go along. We're on Psalm 25. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your ways. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my Savior. And my, peep, my hope is in you all day long. Six. Remember, Lord, your great mercy and love. For they are from old. Seven. Do not remember the sins of my youth, my rebellious ways. According to your love, Remember me, for you, Lord, are good. Verse 8. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in his ways. 9. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them in his way. 10. All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful toward those who keep the demands of of his covenant. I want you to underline that one because that is a very powerful, powerful verse that the Lord is speaking to you and me. It says, All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful toward those who keep the demands of his covenant. Verse 11 For the sake of your name, Lord, forgive my iniquity, through though it is great. Verse 11 For the sake of your name, Lord, we are going to come on this verse again, verse 11, as I tell you something that you may have consent, consented by ignorance. And then you can pray at the end of this uh, reading. Verse 12. Who then are those who fear the Lord? He will, uh, we will instruct them in the ways they should choose. Verse 13. They will spend their days in prosperity and their descendants will inherit their land. The Lord confides in those who fear him. He makes his covenant known to them. 15. My eyes are ever on the Lord, for only he will release my feet from the snare. Can you listen to that verse? Your eyes are always on the Lord. Always on the Lord. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Always. And he will release your feet from the snare. 16. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. Verse 17. Relieve the troubles of my heart and free me from my anguish. 18. Look on my affliction and my distress and take away all my sins. See how numerous are my enemies and how fiercely they attack me and they hate me. Sorry. Let me read verse 19 again. See how numerous are my enemies and how fiercely they, are, they hate me. Verse 20. Guard my life and rescue me. Do not let me be put to shame for I take refuge in you. Verse 21. May integrity and uprightness protect me because my hope, Lord, is in you. May integrity and uprightness protect me because my hope, Lord, is in you. Verse 22. Deliver Israel, O God, from all their troubles. This is a prayer that we are making for ourselves. Deliver Celestine from all her troubles, O God. Deliver Agola, O oh God, from all their trouble. Deliver Andrew, deliver Malcolm from all their troubles. This is a prayer. Now, I begin to open your eyes to see 
that which God has spoken concerning your situation and condition. Probably it looks helpless, but God already has provided a way out. Even though you are walking in sin, the word of God is saying that all the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful. That even as you're going through that difficult situation, all the ways of the Lord are loving and they are faithful. As you are praying to the Lord, remember what the Lord says. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in his ways. So if you have been living in sin, the Lord is instructing you. He's instructing you out of that sin. The Lord is instructing you out of that sexual bondage. The Lord is instructing you out of that, that hatred for your mother, for your mother-in-law, for your sister, for your sister-in-law. This is a call that we need to understand. The consent of ignorance is a consent that we give the devil when we choose to ignore what we should not ignore. For example, I've heard these people say, I don't care what people say about me. I've heard people say that. Let me tell you, you may not care about what people say about you, but you should not allow slander to just go and challenge in the spirit. Slander is a dangerous spirit. Very, very dangerous spirit. Slander will take somebody who was standing in high position and put them down, 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 down and put them inside a well. You put them down in the mud. Drag your name out where you are not supposed to be. So instead of saying, I don't care what people say about me, what you need to do is to say the following words. Proverbs, uh, Psalm 25, Psalm, Psalm 7. It talks about slander, actually. You can destroy slander using that psalm. We were there the other day. But it's good for us to know how to deal with slander. Especially if you have been mentioned about things that are not true. You first need to lay yourself bare before God. And then the second thing you need to do is also ask God to act. And then the third thing you need to do is tell God who he is. This is all in Psalm 7. I may not be able to read all of it. But you must come to this one and say, Lord, I take refuge in you. Save and deliver me from those who pursue me. There are circumstances of slander that will just go away. The Lord will just take care of them. You'll never even hear. Utako unazisikia, tuwe umesha aenda. Auko, ata you are not there, you are not listening. So the consent of ignorance is for you to, to, to hear, to know people are saying things about you and then you just not do anything. You're not supposed to confront them, no. You're not supposed to ask them to stop, no. What you're supposed to do is to pray about it. Pray about it. Pray about it. In my mission Monday, yesterday, the Lord showed me an amazing, amazing way of how he loves it. You know, like, um, last week, you know, I was, I was, I spent the whole day, I spent the whole day out in the field and my intention was I needed to just go and come back from the land and continue, at least just rest with the family, stay with the family and also have some time with them, not being away, 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 away all the time. So I wanted to be with the family as well. So I wanted to go for my mission and come back and continue. But that did not happen. In fact, the, the vehicle broke down on last week's Monday mission. And it, it consumed a lot of resources, you know, as in quite a huge chunk of money. I had to use it. But God is also faithful that he provided through his people. And also he provided through the work that he's put in my hands. And I was able to clear those ones. But now yesterday, before I left for the mission, we had a prayer vigil. We prayed, I think, four hours, three, three hours something. God gave us, gave us the grace. You can view the you can view the Psalm 24, commanding the gates to lift up their heads, possessing the gates, praying throughout the night. And when morning came, I called my friend uh, Victor and I said, "Let's go." It was around four. 
because he's the one who takes for me sometimes i like to record what the things god is doing because it's important some of those people are going to be used mightily by god and i cannot afford not to show them where the lord rescued them from some of them are going to turn around god is going to give them businesses going to give them jobs what things so it's a it's a good thing for us to capture it not for the sake of popularity but for the sake of being good archiving because it's good to know what the heritage god has given you i usually tell people if at all i was writing the bible i would be writing chronicles because i chronicle people's time using my camera i'm a family photographer and when i'm taking pictures of people when they are children before they are born and then i see those children grow all the way up to 10 years of age and they are talking to me and they have known me all their life they have known no one else they have known me all all my life they have just known me as their photographer you can imagine how this is such a great gift that god has mixed together with the ministry god has called me that it is not something that i can retire from it's not something that i can say now i'm going into full time ministry my life itself is a full time ministry it does not have a time that now i am doing ministry now i am not now it is together everything is one and that's why we need to pray and i pray that god fill me with god that even as i go to buy something in the shop i see people are getting saved i'm going to buy mandazi in the morning and as i'm buying mandazi in the morning the man and the woman that are selling the mandazi to me give their life to christ their customer are held back by the holy spirit until they receive the lord and immediately after they got they gave their lives to christ this is a testimony from yesterday as soon as soon as they gave their lives to christ the lord brought orders eh? started giving them orders mbaka they did not have even space they were like wa hii unga tulikuwa tumekanda leo imeisha yote before even 10 o'clock this is god he's at work so when I arrived at the mountain, the first place that I stopped, I know I have done my spiritual mapping of the area and I know the area, I know the kind of covenants that are in the land, I know the places. And the Lord took us in the last season to go and pray in one of the most key strongholds of the powers of darkness. And that prayer, God gave us the grace to bind their kings with fetters and their nobles with chains of iron. That is Psalms 149. And I know that God has begun to do a work among that area. This is in Makweni district, by the way, by the grace of God. And I know you begin to see what God is doing. Because on the, on the, on the last week on Thursday, again, the Lord led me to go. And when he led me to go, I had to go and then we stopped. Again, the Holy Spirit says, stop. I, st <laughs> I love the way he tells me stop. That's why he does not allow me to go on a mission being driven. I drive myself. Even if I've come from the, from the prayer all time, praying at night, I'm the one driving. Not because I don't know how to drive again. My friend knows how to drive, but the Holy Spirit says, I want you to drive. There are times he tells me, okay, now you're tired. Stop. Give him. Tell him to drive you. This is what happens. It's so sweet to be in conjunction with the Holy Spirit. So as, um, as you are beginning to go up the mountain and, you know, there's a particular place that was an altar. There was an altar. People used to come there and sacrifice long time. And the road used to pass through that altar those days. It used to pass. And I remember as a child because I grew up in that place. The road used to pass right next to that that place and now the road was moved and translated to another place and the whole place now is tarmacked god has given us grace the road is smooth you can go all the way to mboni west on the top without any problems there's all tarmac all the way through so when i stopped there i came out with my camera because i wanted to take pictures it all looks so scenic I did not come out with a chauffeur. I did not come out with my prayer shawl because for me, according to me, I was coming to take pictures of the beautiful rocks and I will share them, by the way. I will share the pictures on this wall. So as I came out of the vehicle and I came out to 7 o'clock, we had traveled for two hours and we had already arrived at our source, as our, on, the, on the mountain where we are coming for mission. Notice the nature of the mission is not a mission that, you know, I will say that I am going now, I'm going to preach and sing and uh-uh. On Monday, I'll say, Lord, I've come. 
I'm going on mission. And now the Lord gives the instructions. And there are people who, when we meet with them on the ground, now we tell them, I tell them, let's do this on Monday. So when I tell them, let's do this on Monday, I know this is something that God will do on that mission Monday. So it's not something that I will plan to do myself. It's something that divinely God has been doing and has already planned he's going to do. So there I was. And as I was taking picture, there was this man who was washing his boda boda. He had just arrived to wash his boda boda. So I spoke in Kamba because I wanted him to be comfortable so that he does not worry who is this intruder with a camera, what is he doing, why is he taking pictures. So I just spoke to him and I said, greetings to you in Kamba. I said, oh, greetings. Then I said, wow, my name is so and so. I come from up this hill and I've come here to share with you the love of Jesus Christ, but I am taking these pictures as a photographer. I might use them for calendar or something. I just said that because I don't take pictures aimlessly. For me, if I shoot a picture, the Lord has already created something out of it. So I took a picture. Then, uh, then we started sharing. Hey, I understood something I didn't know. This man knows me. I didn't know him. We had no plan. He's the one who ferries my veterinary doctor to go and attend to the cattle on my farm. So I said, are you ready to receive the Lord? He said, yes. 705, Shadrach Chalo, he gave his life to Jesus. While I was there, my friend was left in the car. He was thinking, I said, come. Come with the Bible. He came with the Bible. Then I started to read, and now I understood, eh, this thing, probably I was thinking I'm not ready for this, to challenge this altar. But now the Lord has already, we've plundered. Yani, right on the shrine where they used to sacrifice those altars and all those things many years ago. And by knowledge I know it is there. Just by being able to do that, that I was able now to, you know, read out the scriptures on that altar and declare Psalm 24 verse 7. The Holy Spirit opened my eyes and say, this is a door, ancient door. This is a door. Hey, glory to God. Can you see the Holy Spirit at work? Yani, he, hey, I did not know that that is what he wanted me to do, but that was where the road passed. That is, that is a door into that town. It is a door into that city. And now the door has been moved to another place, but that is an ancient door. And the Bible says what we were reading yesterday in Psalm 24, 7. It says that, that who may, now what does it say? It says this, let me read it. Lift up your heads, you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Right there on that place, I decreed, that word. And now I have understanding that that's a door. There's water that is flowing there every day. Beautiful place. Beautiful. Sister Emily, when you come, that's a place you must visit. Eh? Celeste, who calls to end? Eh? We must go there, Judy. You must go and see the beautiful fountain, just water flowing. And this is a place that they say Ukamban is dry, but there's no dryness there. The water is flowing, 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 Kabisa. As you we are finishing to pray, another young man started coming in because there, there, there is a car wash now. Cars come there to be washed. As, as a, that young man was there, he was talking in Kamba. He said, eh, Kwani, you are selling this place. He was talking to his friend in Kamba. He thought he saw the vehicle. Then he saw me and he saw my colleague recording with his phone. He, then he did not understand what we are doing. So he came speaking in Kamba thinking that we do not understand. So I spoke and said, ah, no, how are you? About him, bro, Nini is that talking in Kamba? Straight to the word of God, asking him, would you like to give your life to Christ? You can see it in the timeline. I posted this one. He gave his life to Jesus. Right there. Right in the altar, the shrine, yenyewe, apo ndani. Apo ndani, apo. Apo, ndiyo wanaokoka sasa. Apo, ndiyo wanaokoka. Na apo, tunarudi tena, na wataokoka wengi. Na mungu atawasaidia, na kanisa litasimama uko. So the pastors that are there, I'm praying to God that God begin to open their hearts. Because there there's a lot of religiosity, a spirit of religion, big, big, big religion. So since my intention is to do that which the Lord has commanded, is to be able to go and now gather these people up into the churches that God has prepared, that have the spirit and that are talking the word of God. And now we support those pastors. That's now my prayer. 
That is the plan that we need to pray about today. That God help us. That this harvest that you are bringing, that this harvest will not be lost, Father. These people that are getting saved, some in garages, some in hotels, some, Lord, even as they repair my puncher, some as they engineer my car, these people that are getting saved all over, some even in the butchery, some in the car parking lot, all these people that are getting saved. Father, it is you who will sustain them. Lord, it is you who will sustain them. And I pray that you sustain the souls that have been saved, Lord. Even I can, as I go back and remember, there are others that are bound by the enemy, that even trying to get out of that situation, Lord, it will take you to bring deliverance. But Lord, I rent you the same God that rescued Saul. I rent you the same God that turned around for Saul. I rent you the same God that caused King Darius to become a believer and a worshiper of the God of Daniel. I rent you the same God that turned around the heart of Nebuchadnezzar that he can indeed begin to worship the Lord and say, I see a fourth man. You open the eyes of Nebuchadnezzar. I rent you the same God that is going to rescue and to save and to deliver. My Father, my God, I thank you for your word. I pray according to your word in Psalm 25, verse number 1 and 2. I trust in you. I put my trust in you. I put my trust in you. Don't let me be put to shame. Nor let my enemies triumph over me. I want you to pray that prayer. I want you to write it down. You may, not, you may be in a situation where you are asking yourself, where are these enemies? I'm living in prosperity. I don't have any enemies. Let me tell you, even when you're quiet, the enemy is at work. Even when things are looking prosperous, the enemy is preparing something. So you must always constantly do what it says. I trust in you. Don't let me be put to shame, nor let my enemy be triumphing over me in the name of Jesus. Verse 3, no one hopes in you will ever be put to shame. But shame will come on those who are treacherous without cause. So whatever situation, condition, circumstance that is coming, Sister Charity, I come to agree with you and pray that you will not be put to shame. But shame will come on those who are treacherous without cause. The word of the Lord is coming expressly. This is your word. Psalm 25 verse 3. Hold it. We are going on this journey together. This journey, you, when you come here to watch this video, you are also in this journey. You are agreeing with the Lord concerning what he's doing in the life of Malcolm David Silla. Even though there was no one watching, I would still do this because this is what God has commanded. Do this a second season. And I know the grace is sufficient. I know the grace is sufficient. God has already released the grace that is sufficient. That no one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame. So my God, any spirit of shame that is looking upon your children, I come against it in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray against the spirit of shame upon families. Ah, Lord, why should us, why should we be prospering? Yet there is shame in our house. Yes, I'm prosperous. I'm in the diaspora. But my brother is out there in the village impregnating schoolgirls and making it difficult for himself. Lord, this is a no. We are not going to allow the enemy. Uh -uh. We will not be put to shame. I'm telling you, the consent of ignorance is not my portion. I will not consent to be ignorant over the things the devil is doing. If I am prosperous and I am a born again believer, but yet my, my family is fighting each other, is hatred, our ongeleshani, who you are ongeleshi, who you, who you sijua fanyi nini, who you sijua nafanyanga nini, who you analewa, mbaka na okoto kwa barabara. This is not what my portion is. My portion is that the consent of ignorance shall not be my portion. I will not allow the consent of ignorance in my life. So this is the consent you will give the devil if you don't challenge it. You know your brother and your mother are not in too good terms. Why are you leaving it like that? Eh, consent of ignorance. Then he hangs himself. He dies. Then why? Why? Why did we allow the Satan to win? If that has already happened, it is not a time to condemn yourself. It is a time to arise and to pray. Show me your ways, Lord. Be bold. 
pray this prayer. Wacha niwambio kweli. In my young Christianity, this verse nilikuwa na iona na ogopa. This verse, is Psalm 25 verse 4. Show me your ways, Lord, teach me your paths. Na wazaa, hey, apana. Mimi nimesoma kwa hii Bible, nikaona ukiomba, uki, ukianza kutumikia mungu, utapata attacks, siju utafanya nini. I was so afraid. Because I was afraid that when I start going closer and closer to God and praying for people to get saved, that I will get attacked. That now I be afraid. Don't be, don't, ah, ah, usiombeshe sana, apana, usiombeshe. That is the devil at work. Let me tell you, the God who calls you is faithful and will do it. That's the scripture. The God who calls you is faithful. Let me give you that verse. It's important for us to know these things. Hallelujah. The God who calls you, the God who calls you, the God... Who calls you? Huh? Who calls you? Is faithful. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24. First Thessalonians. I told you how in February I bought this Bible and I said I'm going to start all over again. Like I've never known him. Like, I'm going to mark this Bible, like, new. I will mark it new. Every time I go to the Bible, I want to mark. So that tomorrow when you go to the Bible, you will see, ah, kumbi hapa nilikuwa nimesoma. That is why we highlight, by the way. Clean Bibles, neat Bibles are good, but also you need to mark your Bible. And you need to use it. Cover it so that it remains in good condition. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24. It says, The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Welcome, Brother Peter. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. So as you pray this prayer and tell the Lord, Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth. Psalm 25, verse 5. And for you are my God. And my savior, my hope is in you all day long. My hope is in you. My hope is in you. Can you say that one to yourself every day? My hope is in you. My hope, my hope is in you. Darlene Zek used to sing a song. My trust is in the name of the Lord. My hope is in the name of the Lord. Where my help comes from, I will sing your praise. Hallelujah. And I say, my trust is in the name of the Lord. Where my help comes from. You are faithful. Hallelujah. Scripture songs can never go away from the word of God. Even if a secular artist picks the book of Psalms 25 and sings it word for word, it will be powerful. But if you try to mix the holy and the profane, it cannot work. Ignorance, the constant of ignorance is allowing alcoholic drinks, immoral videos into your home. You have a constant of ignorance. So your children are just watching anything on TV and you, you are busy praying in your room, praying hard. Your children are watching anything they choose. You do not stop that. Then it's a consent of ignorance. When you find your children going into the wicked ways, it is because you have consented by your ignorance. It's important for you to know that God has called you and is faithful to do. As you pray this prayer for yourself, guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Back to the mission Monday. We arrived on the uh, Machakos Masi Junction uh, Road almost at midday. Actually, it was midday. And the Lord told me, I want you to go, I want you to go to 
I want you to go to the side of the road. I want you to go to, to buy those white stones that are there. Because, of course, for decoration purposes, I wanted to be, make some landscaping with them. So I said, okay, I'm going to go there. So <laughs> the car came off the road very nicely. I parked there. There was no one that time. Then there are some people who came. And they started asking me, Unataka nga, gani, nini, nini. They are very good. They leave their wares there and go. Because I did not know that the place where they have put them happens to be a black spot on that road. There have been so many car accidents over that road before the lockdown. And the lockdown was good because there were less vehicles. <laughs> the lockdown that lasted three months in Kenya. It was a good thing. Between that area, there are not so many vehicles going because it was locked down. And the only place people could come was Machakos and Masi. They could trade there, but no vehicle was allowed into Nairobi. So the cars there, they were not getting any access. So now, where I've parked, the owners of the stones came and I engaged them. I told them, how much are you going to sell for me? They, we started trading, as in... Um, I did not say bonus as if you anything at that point. I was just me, myself. Then I came out with my camera as usual and started snapping pictures of the highway and, you know, some nice pictures, by the way. I'll share them with you so that you can see. And I thank God for, for I, I, I prayed here for a camera the other day and God has provided. I've already seen it. I've already seen the shop. I've already seen how it looks. And the, now the resources are on their way to me. I don't have to struggle. The Lord has already spoken and now I believe and I stand on the word. In you, Lord, I put my trust. So that is how vulnerable I stand here before the Lord. Because he is going to provide. He will provide. I will present it here because he's the Lord and he answers prayer. Hallelujah. He answers prayer. Let me tell you. So I came out there. Now I say, ah, now I, I've incorporated something else with Mission Monday. I will be taking nice, beautiful pictures of where the places I go. Not the people necessarily. But the people that get born again and I snap, I will produce it in my studio and take it to them as a gift. This is a way of connecting with them again. And this is a way of making sure that they will still stay in the Lord. Because they will be seeing the image of the day they gave their life to Christ. So this is just divine wisdom. The Holy Spirit has released to us that how can this be sustainable? How can we be able to connect with that timber, timber guy back in the village who is from Tarakanede that now the Lord has saved and changed his life? How can we be able to connect with that young little boy, Ian, that got saved in a town in Kedoloni and that caused the havoc there and now moved to Mombasa. Now he's in Budalangi. He opened his ways. God opened a way for him to go to Budalangi. This is how God is doing his thing. Glory to God. Ah, it's a joy. Do not remember the sins of my youth. When I encountered, when I encountered verse 6, that says, Lord, remember, Lord, your great love and mercy for me, for they are of old. When I encountered verse 7, do not remember the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways according to your love. Remember me for you, Lord, are good. Hey, hey. The day I remembered, I saw that verse. The day I saw that verse, I said, Lord, teach me your ways. Guide me in your truth. Teach me for you are my God, my Savior. Tears fell from my eyes as I prayed that prayer. Tears, real tears came out. I remember that day very well that I encountered this verse. I encountered it. Not today. This is something I've read again and again and again. But now I came to this one. And I was afraid to release myself 100% to God because I used to hear stories that when you give yourself to God, problems will follow you. See you what? See you when you go for missions? See you your children will be attacked? My children will not be attacked. My family will not be attacked. In fact, watch the stories. You'll see my family. I posted it there. The thing that I want to tell you is that God is a faithful God. He will remember not the sins of my rebellious ways. My ways of rebellion, the Lord will not remember. It does not matter whether you, are, you, Mr. Pastor, you fell into sexual sin. 
And now you repented and come back to God with earnestness and desire for God. And God will cause answers to prayer. If there's a child that was given up because of this, then if you are living in adultery, you have to leave that adulterous relationship. This is how verse number eight is coming to say. God is upright and good. He instructs sinners in his ways. Ah, isn't the Lord good? Isn't the Lord good, precious people? Brother Solomon, welcome. Psalm 25. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. That as you humble yourself, God is teaching you. So as I began to speak to these vendors, these stone vendors, I'm telling you, the Lord is amazing. The Lord has given me kamba, tongue. I speak like I'm a original born and bred and even been taught by oils in kamba. Nobody taught me kamba. No one. It's my first language, but I'm sure you know. You know how our parents, when they grew us up in the, in the, village, in the, in the city, we rarely know how to talk our language. Like my kids can't speak Kamba. They can't speak Kikuyu. They are a mixture of the two. They can't speak either. They know English. But now I'm going to start to teach them. Because I understand and I begin to see the heritage of when you are praying in your first language. The power that is in that heritage. When you are praying in your first language. There is, for example, let me show you something here. Quickly, because time is really running and I have to get to work. Praise the Lord. The Lord will give me grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord, give me grace. Give me grace, Lord, and give me speed and give me technique. Lord, help me. I cry. Help me, Father. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 16 says this. Ah, is it 16? No, don't quote it yet. Yes, it is in verse 18. Come now, let us settle the matter, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they will be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. Now tell to Amkamba in Makueni, tell him about snow. How will he understand? Let me show you the reason why you need to get yourselves Bibles in your first language. Even if you are Yoruba, there are some things in Yoruba that can only be communicated in Yoruba language to a Yoruba man for that they or Yoruba man will understand. Now, I want to read this same, same verse in Kamba. And I thank God because of uh, the Mwangis. The Mwangis them uh, via, via, via video to, to the mission because they called me when uh, Brother Peter, I really celebrate you so much. For we were able to pray for a couple uh, yesterday, the Mission Monday. I was on video when, you know, we were praying. And, uh, you know, this couple was, they owned the hotel there in, in that small town. And I shared with them about the Lord Jesus Christ. And they know me from the location. So they know I, I, I pray. They know I am a man of God. Now I brought the gospel to their business. So as they were praying, the Mwangis wrote to me and they said, I want you to take Bibles to them. And I managed to buy these wonderful copies, two copies, one for Benson and another one for Mary Motiso. They will be receiving this uh, on Thursday by the grace of God because I trust God that he will release my feet to take this word there, to take these gifts back to them uh, on, on, uh, on Thursday. So I, I pray that God will give me the capacity and I to do this. But get it. Get it. I even want to challenge other pastors. Get the Bible in your first language. Get the Bible in another language. If you are, if you are, a, if you are a Kalenjin man and you are in Ukambani, you are Bishop Koech ministering to the Wakamba, get their Bible. The Holy Spirit will teach you how to read it. Praise the Holy Ghost. Thank you, God. Isaiah. I want to see what, what, what did they say about snow before we go to Proverbs. Hey, Nakwambia. 
God you are worthy. We dedicate this time to you. Isaiah, Isaiah, imwe mustali wa dhanda tu. Mustali we kumi ya nana. Aha. Then you see why it's important to read it to them also in this. He says, Ukai yu tosu waneva mwe. Easia woye ova. Onaedhi wa naesie nyune ndune muno. Ekeedhi wa nzau taeia. Onaedhi wa ni ndune tamukumbu. Ekeedhi wa tawia wa elondu. Ekeedhi wa muketi kila na kwewa. Mukaisa osio wande. Ezi wa muketi kila na kwewa. Mukaisa osio wande. Endi mwalea. Na kungenda. Muka minwa na ovyo. Nondo kanywa wa yehova. Nunenete. You see in the kamba. It does not say. Though your sins are red like. Though your sins are like scarlet. It says in kamba here. So the Kamba translation helps the Mukamba in Makweni to understand the same scripture that you are having in Isaiah chapter eight one chapter one verse eighteen that says though your sins are like scarlet they shall be white as snow. In the Swahili, if I told you understand it in the Swahili also so that. I want to encourage us to read the Bible, to do heavy dose of the Bible. Heavy dosage, heavy, heavy dosage, heavy dose. And these books cost money. So you must invest your money on Bible. You must look for a way to buy Bible and have Bible. Not when you get saved and you have some business going, you are looking for pastor to give you a Bible. That kind of Christianity ended Ended a long time. It used to happen in the days of the missionaries. When they gave us sweets to know about Jesus. Now it is a new different era. You must put in. Why is it that when a mganga is asking you for things. You have money to go and buy. Why is it that you can give uh, even a hundred thousand to a mganga. And you are poor yourself. You, munaenda munauza shamba. Munauza shamba. Munaenda kupeleka pesa kwa mganga. Na sasa nyinyi mnashindwa kununua Biblia kwa sababu unasema Biblia kuko na corona. Hiyo pesa unapata kidogo hata kama uko na njaa, amua. Mi pesa kidogo niko nayo, wacha ninunue Biblia. Na nakwambia utakuwa na njaa siku nyingine. Kwa sababu Mungu atakufunza neno lake. Na neno lake when God gives you his word, let me tell you beloved. God giving you his word. There's something supernatural about it. Something supernatural. Listen to Isaiah in Swahili chapter 1 verse 18. Haya njoni tusemezane asema Bwana, dhambi zenyu zijapokuwa nyekundu sana zitakuwa nyeupe kama theluji. Mswahili anajua snow inaitwa theluji. Kwa hivyo ni vizuri kwa Mswahili aelewe. Zitajapokuwa nyekundu kama bendera. Unaona? Yaani Kiswahili kinabadilisha unaelewa kabisa. The same way that we are reading this scripture. If you come into the presence of God with knowledge you will be able to crush the enemy welcome sister Kani Eldoret welcome welcome praise the lord proverbs 25 we must go we must go on proverbs 25 more proverbs of solomon these are more proverbs of solomon compiled by the men of ezekiah king of judah that's a verse. Eh? Do you know, you think that verse is written there for any other reason? You think, hey, there is nothing that is written in the Bible. Every full stop, every sentence, every comma, every semicolon has a purpose. It has not just written. Even that is in itself a verse. Proverbs 25 verse 1. These are more proverbs of Solomon compiled by the men of Ezekiah, king of Judah. There are some demons that will be quoted for this verse and they scatter. They scatter. So do not think that when you read a scripture in the Bible, it is just for no use. In the book of Chronicles, there are some numbers written there. 
that demons operate with knowledge. Some of them, those numbers you speak there, the king of you what the king of what 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 Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. You read all those scriptures in the realm of the spirit. This book lives. I want you to understand that the book, the word of God, is alive, it is active, it is a sword. The word of the Lord in the realm of the spirit, right, right now, angels of the Lord. Can you imagine? The Lord gave me a 40 hour day, 40 hours. I was up, awake. Driving back, he took me into a route without many cars. <laughs> Glory be to God. It is not my wish the way I choose it. You do a kesha and in the morning you are going for a mission. The Lord says, go, we'll give you, I'll give you strength. And he goes and gives it so amazingly and you finish so well because he is the Lord. Verse 2. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter. To search out a matter is the glory of kings. Three, as the heavens are high and the earth is deep, so the hearts of kings are unsearchable. Four, remove the dross from the silver and a silver smith can produce a vessel. Remove, a wicked, remove wicked officials from the king's presence and his throne will be established through righteousness. This one we pray into all the governments of the earth, particularly in Kenya. My father, my God, remove, remove wicked officials. Remove, remove wicked officials. Start today. Remove wicked officials. Remove them. Remove them from the presidency. Remove them from the legislature. Remove them from the judiciary. Remove them, our God, from the counties. Remove them, our Father, from the armed forces. Remove the weak, wicked officials from the king's presence and the throne will be established through righteousness. 25 Proverbs, verse 6. Do not exalt yourself in the king's presence. Do not claim a place among his great name, among his great men. It is better for him to say, come up here, than for him to humiliate you before his nobles. What you have seen with your eyes, don't bring hastily to court. For what will you do in the end? If your neighbor puts you to shame. So Proverbs 6, 25 verse 6 all the way to 25 verse 10 is one continuous proverb. Now listen to it from verse 6. Do not exalt yourself in the king's presence. Do not claim a place among his great men. It is better for him to say to you, come up here, than for him to humiliate you before his nobles. What you have seen with your eyes, don't bring hastily to court. For what will you do in the end if your neighbor puts you to shame? Verse 9. If you take your neighbor to court, don't betray another's confidence. Or the one who hears it may shame you and charge against you. And the charge against you will stand. 11. 25. 11. Proverbs. Like apples of gold in settings of silver is a ruling rightly given. Like an earring of gold or an ornament of fine gold is a rebuke of a wise judge to a listening ear. 13. Like a snow-cooled drink at harvest time is a trustworthy messenger to the one who sends him. He refreshes the spirit of his master. Like clouds and wind without rain is one who boasts of gifts never given. Through patience, a ruler can be persuaded, and a gentle tongue can break a bone. 16. If you find honey, eat just enough. Too much of it, you will vomit. Verse 17. Seldom set foot in your neighbor's house. Too much of you, and they will hate you. This one is a verse. Don't stay in your neighbor's house so much. 1918, like a club or a sword or a sharp arrow is the one who gives false testimony against a neighbor. 19, like a broken tooth or a lame foot is, a, is reliance on the unfaithful 
in the time of trouble. 25.20 Like one who takes away a garment on a cold day, or like vinegar poured out on a wound, is the one who sings songs to a heavy heart. 21 If your enemy is hungry, give him food to eat. If he is thirsty, give him water to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head, and the Lord will reward you. 23. Like a north wind that brings unexpected rain is a sly tongue which provokes a horrified look. 24. Better to live on a corner of a roof than share a house with a quarrelsome wife. Wives, I want you to listen to this scripture and make sure you shall never be a quarrelsome wife. This is repeated. There was another place we read it. Verse 25. Like cold water to a weary soul is good news from a distant land. For our brothers in diaspora, what a joy when you send us good news. When you write to us good news. When you tell us good news. When you send us gifts. Back home, when you just ring your mom and just tell her, Mom, that is a gift from me. Everything is well. The scripture likens that to good news from a distant land. Hallelujah. If you have not done that in a long time, please do it. Call somebody that is back home. Tell them good news. Tell them you are okay. Tell them you are well. Tell them you are getting back to work. Tell them it is not as bad as it used to be. Tell them these things. It is good news from a distant land. Verse 26. Like a muddied spring or a polluted well are the righteous who give way to the wicked. 27. It is not good to eat too much honey, nor is it honorable to search out matters that are too deep. 28 and the last one, like a city whose walls are broken through is a person who lacks self-control. This is the word of the Lord. I will read it again. Like a city, this is Proverbs 25, verse 28. Like a city whose walls are broken through is a person who lacks self-control. So if self-control is lacking, that you find yourself doing things that they just need to be stopped by self-control, you need to pray for yourself. And also I need to pray for you. I must finish now. I want to invite you that would like to give your life to Christ. The work of preaching, the Holy Spirit has already helped you to understand. You are here, you have fallen back. The Holy Spirit is going to come in your situation and restore you as you pray with me. But as I conclude the testimony of Monday, yesterday, the people that were selling to me those wonderful stones, they told me there's one of the stones they sell that is called dynamite. I don't know where they call it that, but it's a very beautiful stone that they are selling there along Masi, uh, Machakos Kitui Road. That road, you can actually see it on your way if you are traveling there. And um, they told me that corner there has a lot of deaths. People have died there. So many people have died. And because of that, I understood why the Lord told me to go and buy those stones. Actually, I had no use for them. But I went to buy over those stones so that I can... They are beautiful. They are white in color. Very beautiful stones. They are not precious because they are available everywhere. But they are beautiful to the eyes. So as midday came, I said after now leading them to Christ, I said now we are going to pray and then I will blow shofar. I had my small shofar. Said I will blow trumpet here and God will be glorified. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let me try and see if I can get that clip.
I think I'll just have to post it on YouTube. For those of you, you'll watch this on YouTube. Uh, the YouTube channel is Malcolm in Christ. So this is a photo of me and the four men at that corner as they receive the Lord. To the left, that is Boaz, Tab, and the one in the middle. If you look at him, he looked like he's... Yani with his kofia and all that, he did not look like someone who is going to receive the word. But the Lord did it. These people gave their lives to Christ. Ah, there is a clip. A bad name. The name was Mini. Uh, the place of death. And um, there are so many accidents that were happening here. But we shared with the gospel and So I want to make a declaration from Psalm 91, and I'm going to make that declaration in Kamba, because this place, they understand Kamba. So you will watch the full video, you will watch the full video on the YouTube, because we have to finish now. You're here, you're not born again. Repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you. I confess with my mouth, you are Lord. I believe in my heart, God raised you from the dead. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. I am born again. The old is gone. The new has come. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and with your fire. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have prayed that prayer, do let me know. Write in my inbox or even write it in the comment section. Just say, I have received Jesus. Even if you are watching on YouTube, write it in the comment section. Let me know. It doesn't matter which country you are. Now we have connectivity everywhere. This is global. We can do this thing. This is continuing again tomorrow before a live audience. The Lord has given us the grace. We are able to connect. We've been praying in the night season um, in, in a different time zone. And we thank God that also God is releasing the supernatural. We thank God for Patricia Owiyi. May the Lord favor you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord surround each one of you with his goodness and with his majesty. The name of that place, we changed it to Dynamite Corner. Not Kakuone. It is called, they had called it Kakuone, which in Kamba means the place of death. That that place is called Kakuone. It's the place of death. That's what they, they had renamed it. Can you imagine? They had called it that. But now we change the name. Pray there prophetically. Anoint the ground with oil. And I know that now the change, the name is going to change. And I'm going to go with graffiti now. We're going to write. When you're driving along that road, please look on the left. You will see a rock with the name hashtag 150 days, 150 days of Psalms. It will be on that road. Because I know God is at work. That one, we've said it here. I will show it to you. On that road, those men from that land will show me which rock we are going to do that graffiti on. I'm going to go with that paint, spray paint, and we'll write that on that road. Raising altars for the Lord in the land. It is time. It is time. It is time. You will not suffer from the consent of ignorance. You will not suffer from the consent of ignorance. By the word of God, we destroy it. Let us pray in agreement as we conclude. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the word that has come to us about the consent of ignorance that at times we have allowed our families to wallow in poverty, to wallow in sicknesses and diseases by not taking action, by inviting our trust in you, by calling on your name, by praying and seeking your face. My God, today we pray. That you release the supernatural grace upon everyone present who was here in this meeting. I pray that, Lord, they will get a refreshing spiritual revival. That indeed they begin to pray supernaturally. That, Lord, they will see your grace in our time. So, Lord, we bless you even as we honor you because we know you are faithful. We honor you because we know you are true. We love you because we know you are at work. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen and amen. Shalom, peace, blessings to you.
hope to see you on the next video i am malcolm david Silla, and on the youtube i am malcolm in christ god bless you shalom